Right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Kakwadash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world, it only called Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise and glory to the Habakkuk Kakwadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes his edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Aki and Wa'akwath. That's you, brothers and sisters, that's make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught his truth and who rule well. And today, you know, I was going to briefly touch into a couple of articles and a video I uh, wanted to show, you know, and um, as you can see, this uh, this first article here, well, this is uh, off of um, 5 NBC DFW, you know, local news out here in Dallas, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth area, um, you know. The reason why I'm doing this is because, man, hey, we we're in the as we were speaking about at camp yesterday, you know, we're in the time of rejoicing. You know, although you know overall, this is a solemn assembly with us being this truth, but we're also in the time of rejoicing, man, because we're living to see the fall of our enemy. As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick in the book of Sirach 25 and verse seven. Right, it says, "There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children." And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And we are truly living to see the fall of our enemy. We're living through having the breath, you know, of wisdom, you know, dwelling inside of us. And now we understand the desolation of the wicked. Now we understand, you know, the fate for the so-called white man, which is Esau, Edom, as well as the fate, you know, for the wicked of our people. You know, two thirds of our people, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you know, the Israelites, you're going you're gonna to get put to death here, man. You know, as long as you cleave unto America, as we're going to show in these articles, man, you know, uh, particularly this video on YouTube, man, you know, Native Americans are, are, are <laughs> no matter what they what has happened, they still cleave unto this place, man. You know, not just them, you know, but as well as, you know, the Southern Kingdom, you know, uh, the Negroes, the Haitians, the West Indies, the Caribbean, uh, uh, right, the Jamaicans, right, all of our people, the Israelites, they've always trusted in Egypt, but nonetheless, this is um, off of the local news out here. It says Dallas Fort Worth fire departments fight multiple fires started by 4th of July fireworks. Now I'm gonna play a little bit of this video. It's lucky. I don't know why it's not playing. Damn. Let me pull it back up. That's all right, we'll just read into it. It says, um, the cities of Dallas and Fort Worth fought several fires on Monday night after 4th of July fires. Fireworks set dry grass ablaze. Yeah, it's been hot as hell out here, you know, but they thought it would be a good idea, you know, to still pop fireworks. And it says in Dallas, fire officials responded to a blaze under Sylvan Bridge at approximately 10.30 p.m. on Monday, blase, right? Uh, there is something on here that I saw. They had like over... Um, yeah, here we go down here. It says, in total, Fort Worth Fire Department officials were dispatched to 77 grass and brush fires in the city with a total of 145 fire calls so far Monday evening. See? So over 145, you know, uh, um, <laughs> responses to fires, man. And that was just in one city in Fort Worth, you know, let alone Dallas, Texas. You know, but what's happening, Yahweh Bashamal Shah is breaking the mirth of this place, man. He's breaking the mirth. Of Babylon the Great. Let's get this in the book of uh, Baruch. Uh, yeah, Baruch chapter 4. It's Baruch chapter 4. We can start right here, verse um, 20. Start at verse 30. It says, Take a good heart, meaning a good mind, O Jerusalem. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Yeah, this is the time we should take a, a good heart, a good mind, man. Seeing that, you know, the promises of Yahweh Bashem al Shah, you know, pertaining to the destruction of the wicked and the uprising of uh, um, the kingdom of Israel is not at the doors, man. Right? It says, verse 30, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. And who afflicted us, man? All these nations did. But see, the daughter of Babylon has, uh, as Sirach, Salakia, Isaiah 47 says, has uh, 
very heavily laid the yoke upon the old and showed no pity unto the young. Right? It says, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. It says, miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy son. See, it says, miserable are the cities which thy children served. All right? And you had, you know, um, our ancestors right out here in Dallas, Fort Worth, serving this place, man. And all through, man, you had uh, in Illinois, you had, the, what, six people to get shot, like over 35 uh, wounded. All right? Why is that, man? It's the Lord uh, breaking up the mirth out of America, man. See, because scriptures tells you that, that a harlot's last end is bitter. When you read, I want to say, what is that, Proverbs, the seventh chapter? It speaks about a harlot's last end is bitter, man. And that's going to be the uh, last end of uh, the mystery, mystery Babylon the Great, the great harlot, man, the great whore. It's going to be a very bitter end. It's going to end in, in race wars, you know, famines, all the different types of pestilences, you know, the inflation, uh, I mean, uh, the economy collapse. Says verse 34. Let's see where we at 30, 33 for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall so shall she be greed of her own desolation so yeah they were they rejoiced at our ruin right revelation 11 chapter speaks about how they were sending gifts to one another right they rejoiced over those two prophets that tournament that tormented them which was northern kingdom and southern kingdom right but it says so shall she be grieved for her own desolation yeah these americans they're grieving man they're in a they're in a, a mournful time period why? Because the tables are turning. The transition of rulership is underway, man. Right? Verse 34. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. See that? And her pride. See, her pride shall tur be turned into mourning. So all these people are talking about pride this, pride that. Right? It's quickly about to be turned into mourning. And this American pride is tur it's turning into mourn mourning before our eyes. Verse 35, for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. See, and the Lord just gave these people a glimpse of that fire, man. You know, out here in DFW area and there's other places throughout uh, Babylon the Great. You know, that's, that's been set ablaze here as late. And still, man, you still got wildfires out there in New Mexico and in California. It says, for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. But, you know, ultimately, though, that fire is going to come from. Those ICBM missiles, man. You know, that's what we're waiting on. It says, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Thy, lo, thy sons, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, Rejoicing in the glory of the Most High And this is how the Lord said We're going to be gathered together in these last days Synonymously along with the fall of Babylon the Great Right We're going to be The Lord's going to raise us up And gather us together by his word Right And we're going to take a good heart We're going to rejoice And we're going to see the downfall Of our enemies man As a matter of fact Let's skip up here This is probably one of my favorite chapters In the whole Bible man um, Skip up here to verse 24 Like as now the neighbors of Zion and who are the neighbors of Zion? These, these different heathen nations have seen your captivity. So shall they shortly see your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of everlasting. That's right. Wisdom Psalm in the fifth chapter speaks about that. It says, my children suffer patiently. All right. Suffer patiently. And we're patiently suffering, man. You know, that's why scriptures speak about it in Revelation 13, 9 and 10. You know, for here is the faith and the patience of the saints, man. You know, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with a sword must be killed with a sword. See? We're we're suffering patiently. We know what's going to happen, right? But we just got to wait. But while we're waiting, we still got to endure their BS, their pride, their hard looks, right? Infirmities in our flesh, right? Different uh, trials and tribulations that the Lord puts us through. All right, but there's a great reward coming, man. Says, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. And who's our chief enemy, man? Esau. Starting with the womb. Genesis 25th chapter. He was oppressing us then. 
It says, For thy enemy persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. That's right, man. Shortly we're going to see his destruction, and the Lord has given us little tokens and signs right now, right? That's encouraging us, man. But I want to play this video real quick. This is uh, off of YouTube, Proud to be an American. Record low number says they're extremely proud. This is also, also um, Salaki off of Forbes Breaking News. But before I play it, look at this comment down here, man. See? By Shy M. Says, but I am extremely proud not to be only an American, but also a Native American. I love this country no matter what happened in the past. And that's our people, man. Isaiah 30 says that our people trust in oppression. Limitations four, for uh, I've, our eyes have have uh, failed, you know, watching for a nation that could not save us, man. And that's our people, man. And this is why two thirds got to go, man. Here, these people came, raped, robbed, murdered. You got trillions of dollars off of free labor off of you, right? Gave you smallpox blankets, right? And pursuing, uh, you know, for the Native Americans, they broke every single treaty and pact that they made, right? Just to take your women, take your land. Take your uh, your crops, right? The reservoirs, and you see what they're doing with it now. Putting fluoride in it, right? And man, the native Native Americans, man, you, <laughs> man, almost shit, man. You saw, man, you saw did a number on the Native Americans, man. Damn near almost exterminated them, man. But that wasn't going to happen. See, hey, man. But that, when I read that, bro, that I see why you how about your shot, man. You know, has such a, such a uh, such disdain, you know, for for most of our people. They refuse, you know, to to uh, to find covering and protection in him. But they find covering and protection to the very one that oppressed them, man. Uh, but let's play this video real quick. says a record low a record low of 38 percent of adults said that they are extremely proud to be an american <laughs> according to survey published wednesday from galak record low of 38 percent only 38 percent of adults said that they're proud to be an americans man that's the lord taking away the mirth and the pride from this place as we just got in baruch 4 and 34 Let's read it again. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. See? And also because these people are finding out. All right, let's get that. Sirach. I want to say uh, 41. Give me one second. Maybe Sirach 40. These people are finding out the atrocities of their foreparents, man. Now, a lot of them don't care. Some of them do, right? Some of them, they they, they watch us, right? And they hear the, the points that we're bringing out and the precepts backing it up, right? Let me get this real quick. Complain. Oh, God. Yeah, Sirach 41 and 17. I start at verse 5. The children of sinners... And who's the children of sinners, man? These Edomites especially. And of course our people, right? Most of our people. But stand up on this, this devil, man. All right, we can't let this nigga off the loose because the Lord's not. All right, it says the children of sinners are abominable children. All right, that's why Isaiah 14, 26 says what? Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. It says, and they that are conversant in the dwelling of the ungodly, the inheritance of sinners' children shall perish, see? The inheritance of, of sinners children shall perish So these people that inherited What their uh, great great Because as a matter of fact let's, let's look at this um, Look at this down here Going back to this video And uh, Where is it at I had read it earlier Yep here we go What this, this nigga right here David Greider said Today marks the anniversary of the day when our great, great, great grandparents got together. And if you know anything about scriptures, man, about uh, reincarnation, you are your great, 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 great grandfathers, man. So 
The Lord brought these gener He brought <laughs> those same people back today, man, to go ahead and get their punishment. It says, today marks the anniversary of the day when our great, great, great grandparents got together and told the king of England to go pound sand. It took a special kind of bravery to do such a thing. I believe, which I believe lives on in all of us. Yeah, because you are those niggas, man. And that wasn't bravery. That was cowardness, man. You gonna take down people who don't even have guns, you know? And then say that this is God's country, right? It's all right, man. Hey, we, we know the truth now. We're living to see the fall of our enemy, all right? Because a lot of our people, man, that, you know, is part of Black Panthers and all this shit, you know, they get frustrated, you know, but they're not in the congregation of the living. They're dead, but they don't understand what's going on here, man. We do. Sirach 41 and uh, 6, the inheritance of sinners' children shall perish. So America's going to perish because this is what they inherited, man. All right? It says, and their posterity shall have a perpetual reproach, man. So you're going to be constantly looked at as the offscoring, you know, of the world. As the vow, the base man, as the Lord created you to be. As the scum of the earth. It says, verse 7, the children will complain of an ungodly father. See? Because they shall be reproached for his sake, see? So they're complaining because <clears throat> of the ungodly father, man. A lot of these people are. That's why they don't have pride in this place no more. And they also see that their leaders don't give a damn about them, man. You know, but I mean, that's pretty much it on that. I mean, y'all could look at the rest of that video. It's pretty much uh, you know, like subtitles, just commentating on it. But I wanted to get this one as well. It says, state education board members push back on proposal to use involuntary relocation to describe slavery so you see that was something that was proposed right out here in texas man instead of calling it like it is in schools you know telling these young children you know uh this is what happened to the negroes right that they were taken to slavery they want to recoin it and twist it with calling it involuntary it's like involuntary relocation see Let's get some scriptures, man. But that's this devil for you. This is why, I mean, this is what Esau was made for, man. This is why we say that he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Devil goes back to, into Diablos in the Greek, which means deceiver. Deceiver. This man, the Lord is giving, he, I was dwelling upon this this morning. The Lord gave this man a tongue, man. Esau knows how to talk. He knows how to twist words. He knows how to uh, write these uh, unrighteous decrees, these unrighteous laws. And it's just, it's just, it's just smooth like butter, man. Just like Psalms, the 50th chapter says, right? How the words of his mouth were smoother than oil, but war was in his heart. Having those drawn swords, man. Psalm 73 and verse, um, start at verse six. Let's start at verse five. It says, they are not in trouble. And this is a, a Psalm of Asaph, man. He was looking upon the wicked and he was just trying to, Rationalize, like how in the hell are they succeeding? Are they still prospering in life? How is this? How is this happening? You know, and he was getting vexed. You know, but then later on in the chapter, he says, "Then I understood their end when I came into the sanctuary of the Most High, until we came into the congregation of the living. That's when we're going to understand this, this man's end, and that's why we constantly speak about Esau and the and the demise and the destruction of America, because for so long we didn't know anything about this." You know, we just thought this place was going to go on forever in wickedness. We we're going to be slaves, just work these nine to five jobs, you know, get a 401k and just die and, and, and pass that on down, pass that tradition down to our seed forever. Hey, no, until we came into this. Let's get that real quick first. Um, verse 17, verse 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Yeah, when we thought to, when we were thinking about the upon these things, it was too painful for us, man. That's why a lot of our people just just wake and bake, you know, trying to escape reality and get caught up in all these different uh, crazy ass lifestyles because they're trying to escape reality. What well, well, what they thought they knew was reality. Verse seventeen. Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, then understood I therein. What's the sanctuary of the Lord? This truth, man. Being around the believers, having this knowledge, truth, and understanding. It says, then understood I their end. See, that's when we understood the end of Esau Edom, man. 
As the next verse says, surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou cast them down to destruction. So the Lord has put America, he's put these Edomites into a slippery place, man, on a slippery slope to where they can never rise again after they fall. By him putting them at the, uh, at the very top, <laughs> that, was, that was him setting them up. Because there ain't nowhere else you can go after you are already at the top. Your ass trapped. What you going to do? The next step is for you to just jump off or somebody kick you off. Well, that's Yahweh Bashamah Shah. He about to, uh, um, that great stone that's spoken about in the, day in the second chapter is about to come and smite this place, man. So Psalm 73, verse 5, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they played like other men. Yeah, these Edomites, they're not in trouble like Jake, man. Why? Because the curse is not on them. But the curses are coming upon them Pursuant to Deuteronomy 30 and 7 All the curse that was upon us Is going to be upon all of our enemies So captivity coming for y'all man That's one of the main curses Famine coming for y'all Right You're not being able to enjoy your children That's coming You're not being able to enjoy your women That's coming You building up our kingdom That's coming Your life hanging in doubt That's coming for you Right So hey live it up I, I, I couldn't really be mad, be mad. With the few Edomites I saw yesterday celebrating 4th of July, you know, and usually you see a whole lot more, you know, in times past, but, you know, the Lord broke down his pride. But those few Edomites we saw, you know, celebrating, hey, you can't blame them, man. Hey, do what, you, you know, live it up in your kingdom, man. The Lord, this is, this is your season, all right? But they can't even enjoy it, man, because the Lord is burdening, burdening them with a heavy conscience, man. Verse 6, therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. And that's how you know it's speaking about the Edomites, man. This pride compasses this man, man, like a chain. It's all around him. It's the border. It's, it's encircling him. It says violence covereth them as a garment. That's their garment. That's their covering is violence. And that's the America's covering. That's how America obtained everything is through violence. Bloodshed, riches, injuries, got him by deceit. Verse 7, their eyes stand out with fatness. Why? Because they got the fatness of the earth. It says they have more, they have more than the heart could wish, for they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. See, they speak wickedly concerning oppression. Yeah, you want to uh, coin uh, or re-nickname or, or rename slavery to involuntary relocation. That's speaking wickedly concerning oppression. See. So, <laughs> but that's that, that's what you can expect from this devil, man. Nothing less. You know, nothing more. This is what the Lord created the wicked for. Proverbs 16 and verse 4. <laughs> now, I ain't mean to rhyme, but <laughs> hey, it came out like that. Proverbs 16 and 4 says what? Um, I have created all things for myself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. See? You know, but that's pretty much it on that. You know, Lord willing, you brothers and sisters were edified. Hey, hey, keep a rejoicing heart because we're seeing the downfall of our enemy. We see the Lord taking away the pride and the mirth from this place, man. Soon, gas is going to be $10 a gallon. You know, oil, oil prices. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a video on that. You know, um, I believe it was like J.P. Morgan, they were projecting oil, the, the price of uh, uh, barrels of oil to jump up to $300. Right now, the price of oil barrels is like a little over $100, which with oil, uh, oil barrel prices being over $100, you see what the prices we get now. You know, four fifty, five dollars, six dollars in some places, but that now they're talking about three hundred dollars a barrel. So that's gonna shoot prices up to ten to fifteen dollars a gallon, man. So, hey, it, the downfall of America, it, everything right now, it works in our favor, man. It works in our favor. So, you know, we just gotta stick to the scripts, man. You know, and stay encouraged in Yahweh by Shemal Shah, and stay focused, right? Seek ye the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemal Shah, and everything else will be added. You know, but with that, I hope you Akim and Akwath will edify until next time. I want to give all praise on the glory and to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, DTA, Baba Baal, Kwame Shalom.